Hello, in this video I'll show you how to generate an XML file from C Sharp object, that is class model, right? Uh, something that should be very simple, but isn't always all that simple, but it is uh, quite doable. So, first of all, we need, of course, a model, a data model. We have test model right here, and we have string called a while string a2, just basic generic stuff, and we also have a list. Now, this is one of the things that you have to watch out for. You cannot have a list and generate from a list. You cannot generate uh, the XML file from a list object. If you want to have a list, you need to first wrap it in some kind of a class. Even if it's a standalone list, you still need to wrap it. Uh, now, it's maybe because of the structure of the XML and all that stuff, uh, but it is uh, quite troublesome. Another thing is, if you're playing around in the console application, you have program.cs, right? We are in the program.cs, but as you can see, the class, the model class, is not in the program class. This is quite important. It will not work from the program class, and it also has to be public, which kind of makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to uh, generate one, how to write one, and how to then read one. Now, first of all, we need the XML serialization, okay? We do not need this uh, binary. It's a bit of a leftover. I'm going to delete that. Okay, so we need the system IO because we need to get the file streams and then we need the system.xml.serialization. That is what we need. That is what you need to generate an XML file. Then we go into the main program and then we need to construct the XML serializer. It's very simple. Okay, so you construct the XML serializer and you will need to provide, you will need to provide the type, okay, the type of an object uh, which you will serialize and deserialize. Serialize means generating the XML and deserializing means uh, reading the XML. And you read it by basically converting it and converting the raw file into your original object, into your original class model. Okay, so to get the type, you simply wrap the actual type into the type of and you get the type. That's all you need to do. And then we will need somewhere to write it to, to serialize it to. Now you have two options. If you need to send it somewhere, you can just use some other kind of a stream or use a memory stream right here. It will work perfectly. It will be generated into that memory stream. That's it. That's all it will do. But in this case, I want to show you how to create a file. Therefore, I am using a file stream. And then I use file, open, write. Okay. And then I have my placement. You'll see that file. It will work uh, perfectly. Now, if you want to learn a bit more about C Sharp, take a look at my C Sharp course or my C Sharp advanced course where you will learn about writing files, about uh, all these streams and how to handle them properly and many, many other things. Uh, now, to serialize it, we use serializer and then we use method serialize. Now, it does have uh, quite a few options, as you can see, seven overloads it has, and it can be quite confusing and, I believe, somewhat pointless. But basically, you just need to provide the stream into which it will be written, right, into which data will be written, and then you need to provide the object that you are serializing. Okay, so you have this... Uh, test model and the types obviously have to match because there's no other kind of a type declaration. If you are familiar with JSON, it is a bit perhaps more modern arrangement. You just uh, do a type right here before the uh, parameters of the method start. Uh, it's sort of a bit more of a modern arrangement. This is a bit more tedious and more fashioned in my opinion. Okay, so we have serialized, it goes into the stream, and we just have basically that whole object created. And remember, if you need a list, you'll need to wrap it inside a class. Otherwise, it will not work, which is basic stuff. List is one, two, three, nothing fancy. Now, finally, if you want to get the file, you need to dispose the stream, okay? That kind of lets you access a file and the file gets uh, finalized in a way. Okay, so we have this, right? We have this and we can run it. So once the program has finished, we need to go right here into the folder. 
So you can just right click on your XML and you can open it. In this case, let's try to open with Notepad just so we can see what it looks like. And as you can see, it's a beautiful new XML file generated. As you can see, it's test model and then it's string string A3, okay? So kind of a weird thing and you could have uh, something else other than string right in here. Uh, but basically it just takes uh, the names of the uh, variables that you have and it puts them in, in these names. Kind of like JSON, the same exact thing really, it's just a different format. Uh, so now let's see how you read it and reading it is quite simple as well. We have a file stream, okay, we need to get the file stream again and in this case since we are reading the file we need to open read because we're not going to be writing so we only get the read permission, right? And we take the file and then you simply use deserialize, okay, deserialize from the serializer. And then you simply provide the stream into which you want it deserialized, into which you want to be uh, read basically, okay. And then, uh, or rather from which in this case, uh, and then you have the result. The result will be this uh, test model and you will see a beautiful uh, result. Now one thing again to remember. Uh, we do have that uh, type of declared right here, but we do need to cast it in this case because we received an object from the deserialize method and we need to cast it to test model and that will work uh, uh, quite perfectly. I'm just going to show you quickly that it does indeed work. Okay, and as you can see, if I'm going to hover it on it, uh, you can see right here we have test one, test two, and then we have uh, the list of three strings. So it works quite perfectly. Just remember that you need the XML serialization, serializer, construct that, provide the type. Uh, to provide the type, you need the type of, and then you use serialize or deserialize according to uh, whatever you need to do, whether read or write. Uh, now, I hope you enjoyed this. So do subscribe to the channel for more such stuff. There is an exciting project, a giant project coming with Blazor server side. And if you want to learn Blazor, take a look at my Blazor course. Also, take a look at my other courses. And you can find the source code for these YouTube videos on Patreon.